right now we have the entrenched energy monopolies and cartels. You know, we have OPEC and we have the seven sister oil companies that control all the oil and energy. But what people have to understand is that the people who run the energy business in this world, which is the biggest business on the planet, turning over four to five trillion dollars a year, it's bigger than guns and drugs, it's bigger than defense, they control the newspapers, they control the governments. But these companies are so big that they regulate the government which regulates them. It's not free, nothing is free, uh, but uh, cheap and efficient energy exchange is the viable concept. Now I say that everything in this universe is free energy. It's been dreamed of for hundreds of years that somewhere, someplace, as Tesla said, man will hook his machinery to the very wheel work which drives the universe itself. The history of science is the history of the suppression of great inventions. Uh, a few classic stories Nikola Tesla. Nikola Tesla is regarded as the founding father of free energy. His astounding developments in the generation of alternating electrical current are still being used today. His most notorious project involved the transmission of wireless electricity into the atmosphere, which allowed for unlimited power to be freely accessed by everyone. When his financial backer, J.P. Morgan, realized that this power system could not be metered, all funding was immediately withdrawn. Tesla's electrical broadcast towers were dismantled, and through Morgan's many close connections with the media and government, Tesla's career was destroyed. In 1977, Bruce De Palma unveiled the first prototype of the N machine, an electrical generator which uses rotating magnets to generate up to five times more power than it takes to drive it. I know about the fact that the Japanese government and the Indian government have ongoing projects to produce N machines for domestic power. Uh, my partner is Paramahamsa Tiwari, who is the director of the Nuclear Power Corporation of India, which operates all the nuclear plants in India. In late 70s, I learned from Bruce de Palma that he had carried out certain crucial experiments by rotating electromagnets. Tiwari tested a prototype based on de Palma's end machine under laboratory conditions. The results were deemed too impressive, causing disbelief and suspicion among conservative government officials and the power consortiums that backed the project. Tuari was forced to abandon the project completely. It's a major breakthrough that will no doubt make motorists happy. And as Ralph Robinson explained, the Pentagon is also showing lots of interest in this project. U.S. inventor Stan Myers released his water-powered car engine in 1988. The Pentagon flew on the Pentagon Colonel in last week to look at Myers' invention. There's talk of possibly using it in the Star Wars defense program and to run army things. Myers found it virtually impossible to secure financial backing after certain Pentagon officials paid him a visit. A number of similar inventions were developed and tested all around the world. My best friend was killed over this man. There's a chap here about 10 minutes away from here driving. He has been running his car on water since 1986 with the government's permission, provided that he keeps his mouth shut. And with regular intervals, using his own words, they keep warning him to keep his mouth shut. One of our um, colleagues who have been running car on the water for the 10 year period now, he's, he reckons that he's 26 times more powerful than that. a better mouse trap, you know, the world may be the path to your door. If you invent a free energy machine, there'll be a path to be to your door, but you don't want those people there. One of the pivotal people that uh, I encountered early in my uh, career was Edgar Mitchell, the astronaut. Left off. Left off. Edgar J. Mitchell, an Apollo mission astronaut, founded the Neuretics Institute in Southern California. The Institute's charter was supposedly to develop alternative energy systems by attracting inventors from all over the country. Mitchell became extremely interested in De Palma's end machine. He made De Palma a paltry offer to buy out the invention which De Palma naturally refused. He said to me that uh, if I ever tried anything on my own in California, I would get my head blown off. 
I was scared to death. The CIA operates through various very innocent looking fronts to find out what people are thinking and, and what they're inventing. Now, what's more innocent than the Denying Institute founded on transcendental principles to help new age inventors bring free energy into the world? And that situation still exists in the United States today where person really understands what's going on just can't get their idea out because the alternative science and medical fields have been co-opted by the intelligence services and he converted this little engine to run on water this is many many years ago and he used it for several years and somehow the news got out and one day he got visitors and he was told to dump the engine or else three weeks later the man was dead and the coroner's finding was that he fell off the back of a train. He was drunk. No, it happened that he didn't drink. Even Dr. Townsend T. Brown, the uh, electrogravitic uh, research scientist, uh, has on his 16 millimeter film of his lab test, which we've got here, uh, he has guys with the black suits and black hats come into the place. You can see where the legends come from. I mean, uh, uh, these guys come in and they, they look like, you know, bad bark to black man. I mean, it's just, it's classic, and these things do happen. There is no progressive science in a world where every scientific uh, idea is evaluated for its military potential. Our energy, control of energy, equals power in the new world order that is emerging. If you control the energy, the way we get around, the way we get electricity, the way we have our TVs and video cameras and stuff, if you do the control of the energy, then you've got control of the people.